I'm Kevin Tong, born in Queens, New York, spent my entire life in Queens, New York, went to school in Queens, New York, went to church in Queens, New York. And after seeing what's happening in New York, I got one thing to say. Bye. New York City, the Big Apple, home of Broadway, pizza slices, Trump, is being run down by ideologies that are driving those who used to call it home, like me, away from what used to be her warm arms. Here are my top 10 reasons why I'm leaving New York City. Reason number 10, racism. You're probably thinking, I'm about to tell you some story about how some white guy pushed me off the bus. Wrong. Black Lives Matter, the organization, is seeped in racist ideologies whose whole purpose is to subjugate and silence anyone who's not black. And as the movement has proven to be nothing more than selective bias outrage to make people appear that they care about real black issues, but in reality, they don't, Black Lives Matter is silent on issues like black-on-black -black violence, but on the wrong side of the issues when it comes to father absence in a nuclear family, abortion, which has killed over 60 million babies since Roe v. Wade, not to mention their ideology is Marxist. Here's what the co-founder Patrice Colors has to say. The first thing I think is that we actually do have an ideological frame. Um, myself and Alicia in particular are trained organizers. Um, we uh, are trained Marxists. The catalyst of critical race theory is racist. The summation of white supremacy narrative that white people are inherently racist is racist. And the belief that white people are somehow inferior and even subhuman is racist. And the epicenter of championing these ideas is New York City. Reason number nine, defunding the police. I was growing up in post 9-11 era where police were the ones rushing into buildings, risking their lives for the least of these, and I aspire to be in law enforcement for this very reason. Not anymore. The men and women who were once viewed as heroes are now regarded as villains. They're called for everything under the sun. Domestic violence, sex trafficking, terrorist attacks, drugs, a crazy guy throwing feces on the train, homicides, bloods, crips, MS-13, and somehow they're now hated for it. And the results are not promising. For the month of August, there was a 166% increase in the number of shooting incidents across the city. The number of murders citywide increased 47% for the month. Meanwhile, the number of robberies increased to 1,276 and burglaries shot up to 1,310 citywide. The ironic part here is that the people crying for defunding the police are the same ones who are now crying about the crime rates. I sure hope there's no shortage of tissues in the near future. Reason number eight, protecting the villains. Our leaders are supposed to protect the innocent, but in New York City, we have policies of protecting drug addicts, rioters, and looters. Now imagine, living in a city where criminals are treated like royalty, whilst working class citizens that pay taxes are treated like peasants. Now if you thought the crime rates from reason nine were a problem, Wait until you hear about the city's registered pedophile delivery system. New York City doesn't just dump garbage in the streets and subways. It also dumps pedophiles still on parole in Upper West Side neighborhoods. According to the New York Post, the city has even been dumping homeless pedophiles near elementary school playgrounds. So hide your husband, hide your wife, hide your kids. Reason number seven, sickles in the schools. In today's day and age, where kids have to worry about peer pressure, keeping up with new cultural trends like TikTok, drag queen happy hour, Netflix cuties, and the changing tides of the education system trying to indoctrinate them with liberal agendas like gender studies, et cetera, et cetera, now parents have to worry about them being safe in their classrooms as teachers are having sexual relations with the very same kids they're supposed to be protecting eight hours a day. In New York City, kids are no longer safe on the streets, in the parks, and now they're no longer safe in the classrooms. Man, maybe we do need to lock schools down, not to protect kids from COVID-19, but to protect them from their pedophile teachers. Reason number six, Cuomo. Not only is he to blame for the New York City coronavirus catastrophe, but he also is being reviewed by the DOJ for his handling of nursing home deaths. As someone who has a grandmother he hasn't been allowed to see since the city shut down entirely in February, even though she only lives five miles away, I can tell you all about the pain New York families are going through right now. You can imagine 
how emotionally taxing it must be for the grandmother who is locked up in a nursing home and can only have video calls once a week. Reason number five, the unemployment rate in blue states. Not only do Democratic-run states have the most coronavirus deaths per capita despite severe lockdowns, the lockdowns have dramatically increased the economic damage caused by the virus. As a result, red states are leading the nation's economic recovery, while blue states like New York are leading in unemployment. So if you're hoping to start a family like I am, and hoping to find a job in a city that even businesses are leaving, you might want to think again. Reason number four, punishing zip codes. New York City leaders want more lockdowns, but they aren't locking down all of Queens or all of Brooklyn. They're locking people down by zip code. This strategy was created in an attempt to stop the spread of COVID-19. It affects approximately 500,000 people, 100 public schools, and 200 charter schools, all within the nine targeted zip codes in Brooklyn and Queens. Now think for a minute. Whether your business survives or not is going to be determined by your zip code. Mom and pop shops that struggle to make any revenue during the earlier coronavirus lockdown won't have a chance to make a comeback because a certain politician decided to put their zip code on the list. Which leads me to reason number three, de Blasio. Not only did he defund and demoralize the police, not only did he embrace the BLM narrative that is Marxist in nature, not only did he illegally paint Black Lives Matter in front of the Trump Tower to make a political statement, because, you know, he actually cares about black lives, which, if that really was the case, he'd paint Baby Lives Matter, since a black baby in New York City is way, 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 way more likely to be aborted than to ever be killed by the police, but let's not even get into that one. But now, education is at stake because he's trying to charge charter schools $500,000 to use their own athletic fields. Not only are kids suffering from psychological stress of COVID restrictions, being socially distanced from friends, but now financially cripple them? De Blasio will go down as the worst Democratic mayor New York City has ever had. Reason number two, soft censorship. Now, if hard censorship is a government controlling your freedom of speech, then soft censorship might be your peers, family members, and friends criticizing you for holding a different opinion and calling you out unnecessarily simply because the facts don't fit their feelings. When I started calling out what was going on around me, here's what happened. I lost friends, I lost family, I was called an Uncle Tom, a sellout, house Negro, my sister lost her volunteer job for posting one of my videos on Instagram. Now, imagine you living in the city you love, watching it be overtaken by Marxist ideologies, watching crime rates going through the roof, watching pedophiles being dumped near playgrounds, and you're not allowed to say anything about it. You get fired from your job if you speak out. You can't get a new job once they find out your views. No callbacks. And you find out the friends you thought you had start dropping like flies the minute you say you don't support Black Lives Matter. The reason I'm leaving is I don't want to watch this anymore. Then, on top of that, you find out the one place where you're supposed to feel the most safe, the most secure, the place to point you to the one who guarantees you shelter from this cruel, cruel world is no longer a place of refuge. Which leads me to reason number one. The cowardice of the church. If all my other points weren't enough, number one takes the cake. If the church in New York City was strong, informed, biblically sound, and was unflinchingly firm in the stance to not bow to the cultural call to forsake the foundation of the truth, I would stay here and endure everything else I just said, 10 through 2. I would stay here for the church and the gospel. But many pastors are emotionally, scripturally, and culturally compromised. They've been blown around by the winds of politics, which has crippled the true witness of what it means to be a light in dark places. Now, this is not to say that the church is supposed to get swept up with affirming or disavowing a specific candidate. But when the church has forsaken the call of the gospel of Jesus Christ to reconcile man to God, when the church has sacrificed the truth of scripture on the altar of cultural popularity, the salt has lost its flavor and at that point should be thrown out. Bars open, clubs open, abortion clinics open for business. The church in New York City, non-essential. Pastors, silent. Daniel 11.32 says the people that do know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. And we're finding out who knows their God and who doesn't. So what does this mean? 
Goodbye, New York City. Hello, Texas.